microphone down for a few more minutes. Let's just get our hands and lift them up. Let's, let's open our hearts and let's really listen to this song and just ask God to move like never before. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's just lift our hands. Let's clap. Let's give the Lord some praise right now. Lord, we just thank you, God. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for being here in this house. Lord, just have your way right now. Just move. Praise God. Hallelujah. We love you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. That's what I was looking for. Come on now. Thank you, worship team. Wow, been a great service so far. You know, praise and worship had me moving again like I'm a young man, right? And I'm over there. I'm looking at everybody else. I'm trying to, you know, get the two-step pause thing going in. And I, gotta for I forget that every time I do that, I feel good and I feel real cool and I'm just in the spirit, right? But when I wake up the next morning... My knees be hurting, they be cracking when I get out of bed, right? Uh, and if I don't wake up first, my wife does, I hear her knees crack, right? <laughs> Anyways, on behalf of Pastor Dan and Sister Mary, we thank you for coming tonight. Amen. You guys can be seated right now. All right. So you guys, you guys, most of you know who I am. My name is Brother Bill Rock, and uh, I'm a graduate from the men's home. Amen. I say that proudly because the men's home saved my life, right? And it's the place that God used me and then taught me, right, how to stand still. And so, you know, every time I see the men in the home and I see them sticking it out and showing up every day and just, it blesses me. Because I, I, I just know that they don't know what, what's in store for them here in the future, but I do because I'm living it right now. Amen? So I give all glory to God for that. Um, but before we start, let us pray. Father, we just thank you right now, Lord, for this opportunity, God, to come and receive a word from you, Lord. And God, we just ask simply that you would remove any distractions from our mind, God, any weight or burden of this day, God, anything that's not of you, Lord, let it be cast aside, God, so that we could receive what you have for us, Lord. And I pray, God, that this word would go forth with simplicity as you gave it to me. Father, we love you. We give you all the glory and all the people of God say... Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. All right. You can go ahead and put that up there. There we go. So for those of you that like to put a title to your message, there it is. Keep going. Keep growing. All right. Can this side say keep going? Come on now. I didn't even have to cue the second half there. Right? This is a, a really exciting word that I believe God gave me, and I'm a little fired up because this is the word that was given to me that really um, taught me to stand still. When I came upon this little nugget, this knowledge, it helped me to stand still during the worst and hardest times of my walk with Christ. Amen? And I know that some of us right now, we may be cheesing in our seats, got a big smile, 
but maybe we're going through some of the hardest things we ever had and we haven't shared that with anybody, right? We all know we got things going on at home. We got things going on in our families. And on top of that, we have to deal with what's going on in this world, right? It's a, it's a whole new time, which is going to actually expect a whole new kind of faith. So I'm here tonight. I'm going to give you a short word. I'm going to have you guys out of here by midnight. And then we're going to have, like, a few people took me seriously. They're like, it was like there was an actual flinch back there, like in the third row. So um, we're not going to be long because I do want to pray tonight. That's what we're here for, right? Friday night prayer. Amen. So I counted an honor and privilege to, to uh, be able to speak. And um, before I get started, I want to thank all of you that are watching us on Facebook and YouTube. And uh, I would ask that you go ahead and, and uh, be part of this. If you have any prayer requests, anything like that, we have a minister on duty. Um, and just let us know where you're coming from. Amen. So what we're going to be talking about is how God keeps us, right? God is the keeper. And, you know, I just love it whenever uh, God gives me a word and I come in. I didn't know what worship songs were going to be played today, but both of those songs talks about how God keeps us, right? How, how he has saved us, right? And, and how he fills us. And so we're going to talk about the word keep. We, we think it's a simple word, right? We use it, and there's, there's different ways to use it. It means different things. But let's start off with what it means in the Hebrew. Amen? So the word keep is, is the word shamar. Amen? It's in Hebrew, and it means to guard and protect. Right? It don't mean to get that $20, and I'm going to keep it and put it in my, in my pocket. It means to guard and protect. Now, when we look at the Webster Dictionary or the secular meaning, the world's meaning, right, um, it means basically to keep, uh, retain, that word detain, right? I know I was kept before by the, by the law enforcement agencies, right? Detain, withhold, reserve, right? Holding one's possessions or under one's control. Amen? And then finally... Custody or control. These words are, are all alluding to what keep means. And so let's see what the Bible says. Now we'll turn your Bible to Psalm 121. And I'm going to read all the way up to about 8. Amen? All right. And I'm going to go ahead and go with that. And I'm reading this out of the Amplified. The word simply says, I will lift up my eyes to the hills of Jerusalem. From where shall my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to slip. He, will, he, he who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber briefly nor sleep soundly. Amen. The Lord is your keeper. Right? The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun will not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will protect you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will guard your going out and your coming in. That is everything that you do from this time forth and forever. Now, that's an amazing word, right? I remember when I got this word and I studied it and it, and, and it began to um, really manifest inside of me. And when the first time that I really uh, got this message is when I was in the Christian recovery home the second time. Right? I'm here to tell you, man, you don't need to go through it twice. You can do it the first time. But I'm, I was a little hard-headed. I've got two certificates. I didn't do it once and then come back for three months. I went two full terms in the men's home. Right? Because watch this. Even when I left after the first time, the Lord kept me. He kept me when I was out there making mistakes, right? He kept me when I had backslidden. He kept me when I wasn't mindful of him, right? He withheld the punishment of the things that should have happened to me because of my disobedience. And why did he do that? He did that because he had a plan and purpose for my life. I don't think, think you understand. See, if he has a plan and purpose for this life, what do you think he has for you? Right? If he can use me, right? I was a drug addict. I was an alcoholic. I was a liar. Right? God turned me around. 
He delivered me, right? He got me out of that bondage. But watch this. It took a minute. And what I mean by a minute, a couple years to change my character. He going he to take that booze from you, that urge to smoke, that drink, right? But, but what's he going to do about your character? That ain't going to change overnight. He wants you to get into his word so that his word gets into you and then he can begin to keep you. See, over and over in Psalm 121, when we hear this, it says God reassures us that he is our keeper, right? That he will watch over us in every circumstance. And, and when I hear that, that means when we're doing good and when we're doing bad. Now, we know that ain't a license to go out and cut up, right? That's not a license to say, you know what, I'm going to slip into the club because God knows my heart, right? And I did it before and he forgave me. We don't do that, right? But God's going to keep us, right? He's not going to walk away from us when we walk away from him. Because once he says that he's going to keep us, he's going to keep us for eternity. You're talking to a backslider who went out back out there and I made it back in, right? And there's several people here that, that may have been in the home more times than me or backslidden more time than me, right? It doesn't matter how many times. It's how many times you stand back up, right? It's, it, it might take a while for it to sink in to get into your DNA, but it happens. It's a process, Right? See, he's going to watch us over and over in every circumstance. He will keep our feet from slipping. Pardon me, slipping. He will be our shade. He's going to protect us from the sun. He will keep us warm under the moon. Watch this. He will not sleep. So we can rest while he stands sentinel. I just wanted to use that word sentinel. It's such a cool word. Right? I think of a big old buff guard, right, with a spear, right, just standing over me, making sure that nobody comes near me. That's who God is, except God's a little bigger than that, right? We can't perceive in our own intellect just how many times he has protected us. Amen? I like it that we know that God never sleeps because Lord knows I sleep a lot. And, and some of us do even when we're awake. We might be spiritually asleep, right? And this is the time when it's most vital for our protection. Now, listen to this. He's going to preserve our souls from all evil forever. That means he's going to save us, right? Now, there's another side to this. We can't just take that word and not walk out his plan and purpose for our lives, right? We can't just take this word in and not have it produce something within the body of Christ. When that word comes in us, it's going to have to produce some kind of action because the word of God will never return void. Right now, the Word of God is sitting in all of you, and it's producing a good work, right? It, and you may not even know what's happening, but it's producing a good work. And I'm here to tell you that even years and years after getting out of the recovery home, stuff was still coming up and rising out of me from all that time I spent in the Bible. Amen? Because that Word kept me. It kept me when I was out there. Watch this. The word preserve indicates the most tender care and protection. And in addition to all the verses that we heard, he covers every eventuality when he tells us that he will preserve us from all evil. We got to get it in our heads that God is our keeper, right? Because in these times, we might get a little rattled. We might get a little scared and we might look for protection somewhere else, right? From, for, from our bank accounts, right? From a security that we know. But this is the time that we got to rise up, and, and this is the time when our faith is, is being demanded. Because when we rise up in our faith, God is going to move like never before. You think you've read about miracles in the Bible. Miracles are happening right now around this world in every ministry. There's a great revival happening everywhere. Everybody's waking up. And if you, if you look around, you'll see people coming back to, that weren't here before, that haven't been here for a long time. I just praise God for that. See, why does this psalm repeatedly tell us that God is keeping us? This is why. He understands that our trust is slow to gain and easy to lose, right? I, I know I'm not the only one that loses my faith sometimes. You know, it, it reminds me when I was reading an autobiography on Billy Graham. And there's a portion of that autobiography where he said, even after leading thousands and thousands and thousands of people to the Lord, there were times when he questioned God. And to me, that was powerful. Such a powerful man with, with that much faith. 
And it was simply because he was a man, right? So we're susceptible to this, right? Losing our faith, especially when, when God really cranks up or God or the enemy cranks that fire up because both of them will to get us moving. See, we live in a world that readily breaks the most solemn of vows. It's easy to make a, a, a promise and then we break it. You know, a, a lot of people that aren't even saved, they do that with their, their children and break their hearts, right? They do it with their friends and those relationships get messed up. And we know our family members do it all the time. Amen? Amen? And so we have to understand that he emphasizes that his promise to let us know, he emphasizes this, that he will honor our faith. That simply means that if we're going to step out of the boat, right, if we're going to get out of that boat and, 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 and step onto that lake, right, he's going to be there. But what do we have to do? We got to have what? Faith. Faith. See, the Bible, you have to understand something. We are in dire times, and we need to understand that God is our protector and that we can't rely on the right things. Watch this. The Bible's not saying that we're never going to have trouble. Right? Is anybody having trouble right now? I got plenty of trouble coming my way. Right? This is a, a kind of a thermometer to see where you're at with your walk with God. Because if nothing's happening in your life, if you don't have anything kicking up, then, then maybe you're not stirring the pot. Amen? Because one thing that I've learned being with the Lord, the more I press in, the more, he, the more Satan presses in. But you know what? There's an answer to this. See, God's not saying that hardships and sufferings won't come, but he will deliver you out of them. Now, let's see what Psalm 34 19 says. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord, pardon me, the Lord delivers him out of them all. Right? And, and this is the hard part, that some hardships and sufferings are necessary. That means we have to experience loss. We have to experience physical pain. We have to experience a situation that we can't find a remedy for other than God. Right? I'll tell you, when I was out there, before I came to Christ, I, he was my very, very last choice, right? I was out there on the street. I had nothing but lint in my pocket. My family members wouldn't answer my calls. I had no place to live, right? I was having anxiety attacks, panic attacks, hearing voices, going through withdrawals because I couldn't get my booze, right? It was really, really bad. But don't you know, for that previous three or four months, um, people came up to me and kept slipping me that men's home flyer. Everywhere I went, I ran into a men's home flyer, right? And, and, and I was like, what's going on here? I finally came to a choice where I had nothing left, but okay, I'm going to try this Jesus thing. My experiences before I got that flyer, I had seen a lot of hypocrisy in the church. I used that as an excuse not to come to God. But watch this. When I gave it all up and God moved and brought me deliverance and I came to that Christian recovery home and that bondage lifted up off of me, I, be, I, I saw the real world for the first time, right? My, my eyes were not, weren't convoluted anymore, but I was seeing clear. I was delivered, but I still had my character. My character had to be, had to be uh, changed by the renewing of my mind. But now I was in a position, right? I had a new heart because I just received the Lord, right? I had a fresh mind. God took away all those urges for drugs, cigarettes, alcohol. And so there I was. And God started pouring into me. Amen? And that's what God wants to do. So when we hear this, that some hardships and sufferings are necessary, maybe this answers a question for a few of you guys around here that, that are going through some stuff and don't understand why. You have to ask God not only to help you get through it, but you have to ask him to reveal why is this happening. He's trying to show you something. Now we're going to get a little deeper into this. See, when problems come, you have to stay stand still and let the Lord help you. You got to stay still, right? Because when problems come, I used to run, right? I always picked up my problems, my suitcases, went over to the next state and set them down, and there I was uh, in a new place with my same old problems, right? They never went anywhere. That's the problem with running. Wherever you go, there you are because you're the problem. Amen? So... Listen to this. When a bird is caught in a snare, the more it struggles, the more it will hurt itself. Has anybody ever seen this? You ever see somebody, an animal get caught up in a barbed wire fence or, or, or in wire? The more they struggle, the, the tighter they get bound into that thing. 
And so th- it, when we do that, we struggle and we hurt ourselves more, right? See, if, if we were just to keep still, it would be easy for someone to come and help us. And when I mean someone, that means Jesus. But when we're bucking, when we're trying to find a way out, right, and, and, and trying to find solutions because God isn't moving fast enough for us, man, that's when we, we begin to experience, right, not God's judgment, right, or, or God, God's punishment, but we're going to experience what we have sown, right? Whatever we do is going to have an effect. If we do something positive, man, positive things are going to come. But if we do something negative, it's going to come right back and slap us in the side of the head. Guarantee. You know, I don't know about you, but my dad was always like, what comes around goes around. Right? You hear these things and, and these old adages, and they all come from the Bible. You know, you'd be laughing at them because they'd be saying some old stuff, right? But you know what? They're right. And that's the scary thing. The older I get, the more I start thinking like my dad. And then I'm like, wow, it's happened. I'm becoming my father. But more importantly, I see the wisdom in his words and, and only wish that I listened to them when I was earlier or younger. Pardon me. See, when you don't know what to do, the thing to do is to look at the Lord and wait. Psalms 46 and 10 says this. Be still and know that I am God. Right. That means, you know what? Let's understand that this is a situation that I can't comprehend. So I better stand still and let God move. Because if I, if I go and try to do something, I'm going to do something stupid like I normally do, right? And I'm going to end up with a really bad result. I don't know, but I was the king of poor choices without the Lord. And even as a Christian, maybe even recently, I've made poor choices in my life, right? But the Holy Spirit will always bring me right back on track. And let me tell you why, because God keeps me, right? There's one thing that we also have to know about our troubles. It's limited to our strength level. I'm going to say that one more time. Our troubles are limited to the level of our strength. And let me tell you what I mean by that, right? Um, Like sometimes we lose things or people out of our lives. And when we do, we learn that the one thing we'll never lose is God. See, he's never going to leave us. He's not going to forsake us. And he's never going to give us anything that we cannot bear. That's his promise. If we draw on his power. We can't expect to have God deliver us without us trusting in him. And that's what drawing on his power means. It means that we have connected our faith to his word. Right? So that word can become active. We've activated that word through our faith. And when that happens, we begin to see things in the supernatural, right? We begin to see changes happen in our life, in those that we're praying for. And I don't know about you, but that gets me excited. I've seen family members saved because of my prayers, right? He heard me. He heard me. And you know what? He kept my family too. See, it's like individual sports, right? Anybody here watch sports? I think everybody knows that I'm a big UFC fan. I like some boxing and football. But when we watch UFC or boxing, we see that they have weight classes, right? Heavyweight, light heavyweight, featherweight, bantamweight. You don't see a heavyweight fighting a lightweight, right? We don't see that. That's a mismatch. So we, we got to understand that uh, he's never going to put an unequal opponent against us, right? Going back to saying he promised he's never going to give us more than what we can bear, That means that we're not going to get something that we think is, um, it may seem insurmountable, which simply means that there's no way I'm going to get over this one, right? But if that thing is in front of us and we have faith, watch this. God's going to move. He's going to move if you draw on his power. Now, similarly, God won't allow trouble to come our way that's too big for us. See, like I said, it may look like it's too big, but when we rely on God, we find out that we can overcome it. Now, I don't know about you, but I've experienced this before, saw some impossible situations, and then God moved. I thought in my own mind I could make things happen, or in my own intellect I tried to figure out how God was going to do it, and it it never came that way. And every time he did it, it caught me off guard, it blew my mind, and it gave me an increase in my faith. Now, does that mean that the next big thing that, that came didn't rattle me? Yeah, I get rattled. But then the Holy Spirit, 
right, rises up and reminds me of what God's done in my life, what he's done before, right? He takes me back to that place where I first received him, right? Can anybody here remember the trouble that we were in, right, the, the type of people that we were before we allowed God to come and just wash our minds and our bodies, right, and then come into our families? I love God because of what he did for me. I love him that he continues to love me even when I don't think of him. And what I mean by that is he loved me even when I did not profess him. And every time the devil tried to kill me, he said, uh-uh. No, I'm keeping him for me. And that's what he's done with every single person in this room. See, we can't rely on the wrong things. We can't do that. Psalm 146, 3 and 4 says this. Do not put your trust in princes nor in a son of man. What does that mean? That means that we never take our issues to somebody other than God. Now, if we have a medical problem, we go to the doctor. The doctor is, is going to do what he's been anointed to do. And don't you know that, that God has the heart of the king, the heart of the doctor in his hand to move it this way or that? Right? God's going to use anybody that he can, even people that we can't even think or understand, to come and help us in our situation. We have to know these things, and I'm telling you these things because trouble's going to come. Look at your neighbor and say, trouble's going to come. Right? But you know what? When the trouble comes, we ain't going to be knocked off. We're going to stand strong, right? That's why we've, we're filling this place out. That's why we have a new building in the horizon. I don't know about you, but this is an exciting time, guys. Exciting. There's incredible things happening. And right now, the harvest field is so ripe. People are scared, right? People that wouldn't even think about Jesus are now looking to, for some help because the world is not making any sense. And when this happens, we tend to rely on the wrong things. See, when things get rough, um, they will and can put our, you know, and they will. We can put our trust in medical science. Um, we can put our trust into our employers or our jobs, right, um, in science or even in our government. But these are all human institutions, right? And guess what? They're prone to failure and abuse. We, we've seen it from the very top level of our government, what can happen. They're, they're limited. But God is unlimited. See, not only is he going to prevent these things from happening to us, but he's going to protect us, right? Verse 7 in this, in this uh, opening of Scripture says, the Lord will keep you from all harm, right? This tells us that God prevents many bad things from happening. We might take that for granted when we hear, hear it, but I wonder how many accidents, how many times there was a gun pointed at me, how many times somebody had murder in their heart because of, I ripped them off. But God did not allow that to happen. Right? How many of you have experienced supernatural things out there driving? Right? You know you should have been in an accident. Right? You know this should have happened, but it didn't. And it makes you stop and pause and say, you know what? Something supernatural handed here. That's God. That's God keeping you. See, you, gotta wonder, or you, got, you have to understand that no matter where you are, you're kept by God. Right? No matter what the obstacle, you're going to be kept by God. Amen? Whatever the hour is, he's going to keep you. Whatever the conditions are, he's going to keep you. Right? And I want to get this word keep in your, in your spirit. Right? No matter who the enemy is, right? You are kept by God. No matter how long it takes, you are kept by God. There is no time limit. Amen? See, what God expects from us is faith. When we face hard situations and in those times, we have to remember that God is with us and he is our keeper. See, look at what Paul says here in 2 Thessalonians 3 and 3. But the Lord is faithful, who shall establish you and keep you from evil. If anybody ever faced evil people, it was Paul, right? We know what Paul, everybody has read the Bible and know that Paul uh, had faced just about every kind of evil there was. But what happened? God kept him, right? Does everybody know the story of the road to Damascus? Come on. We got we to gotta really find out who Paul is because this is a man uh, who wrote a majority of the New Testament and led us Gentiles to glory. And what I mean by Gentiles is anybody that's not a Jew, right? 
He was the greatest voice piece. And it's this man that, that because of him, that's where we're at now. Because of God's using him. See, what God expects from us is faith. Amen? Now, the same God who delivered and kept Apostle Paul, he's the same God that's keeping us. Right? The same exact God that has the same power, the same abilities. This is the same God who was, who is, and who is to come. Amen? And so we have to understand that he's going to be our hope and our confidence. Think about that. God is our hope, and he's our confidence. When things go bad, we don't hope for things to get better. We hope in God. We want things to get better. It's not a bad thing to do. But if we read our Bible, we know that what's happening to the world is what's supposed to be happening. The world's dying so the kingdom of God can come down. Amen? And it's happening sooner than later. People have been talking about this for many, many decades and centuries, right? But, you know, our little lives is nothing but a blink to God. We don't perceive time in his realm because there is no time. So we have to understand that there is an urgency right now. And we, we're seeing the birth signs, right? We're seeing what's going on in the world. We're seeing the, the, the depletion of character everywhere. Morals are getting thrown out the window, right? They're, they're rewriting the Constitution. They're rewriting the moral code. But God keeps us, right? Right? God keeps us because we know when we have his word in us and when we read his word and we operate in our giftings and we're producing fruit and we're leading others to the Lord, right? We know that we're making an impact in this world. I don't know about you, but I want to be that person that, that is a catalyst in somebody else's life. That means God used me to help change somebody, right? I don't think I could do anything, anything better in this world. You know, men aspire to do great things and build huge buildings and amass great wealth. But to actually urge and compel somebody to go to the Lord and watch it come to pass is the greatest thing that you can do. Amen? Listen to what this says. Proverbs 3, 21 through 26. My son, do not let wisdom and understanding out of your sight. Preserve sound judgment and discretion. They will be life for you and an ornament to grace your neck. Then you will go on your way in safety and your foot will not stumble. When you lie down, you will not be afraid. And when you lie down, your sleep will be sweet. Have no fear of sudden disaster or the ruin that overtakes the wicked. For the Lord will be at your side and will keep your foot from being snared. Amen. Has anybody ever been snared or know what a snare is? I've had handcuffs on, I've had chains on, uh, and I've been chained to other men and driven across the country in a little bus, right? The real thing that you see in the movies, that happened to me. And so I had, my foot was snared, but you know what? God kept me through that whole situation. And, and I'm just going to drop this. After everything that I did and that I went to jail for, all that stuff got expunged. Right? I pass every background check there is now. Right? I, I'm working in a, in a prestigious field where I get to help people. And just to think that I used to harm people. That's what I did to get what I needed to get. But it's just like Paul. God saw him persecuting. He says, man, if I can just turn this guy around and, 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 and point him towards me. Right? If I can use him to, to grab it. And he uses that same zeal and desire that he had to persecute my Christians. And he looked at me and says, well, this guy really likes his drugs. He likes to do his stuff, man. If I can just turn that into really wanting to uh, see people getting saved, right? To really wanting to, to help hurting people. And how do we know when we're like that? Because when we see somebody at 7-Eleven or on the corner falling out, we don't try to avoid them, but our heart goes out for them. When we look in their eyes and we see and recognize that they're in pain, and then that pain comes into our own heart. It's called having a sensitive sensitivity to the spirit. And the Lord uses our heart, right? This new heart that he gives us. And so if we look at somebody and we don't want to help them, we have to do a heart check. Sometimes, you know, we, we've, we've had bad experiences. We may be in a bad season in our life. 
But you know what? If you ask God every morning that you get up, he will use you to talk to anybody. Right? You know, Pastor Dan said something a long time ago that really stuck with me. He said, God will raise you up in your mess because of your calling, and you're going to have to deal with it. Right? And to me, that spoke of God's grace on your life. It wasn't, it didn't hit me like a get-out-of-jail-free card. It made me understand that every single person in this room has a calling on their life. Some of you have uh, re have been revealed to. Some of you don't know what it is. But know this, you've all been called to spread that message to your families, to your neighbors, to those people um, on your jobs. God wants to use you. You can talk to somebody that I can't reach because of who you are and the experiences that you've been in. Amen? That's why we got a ministry like we do. We got a ministry full of people that are brave, right? We go out in the streets at midnight where other people wouldn't do that. They fear for their safety, right? But we're radical people, right? I know that I've done jumped out of some windows. I've broken into houses. I've done, I'm telling on myself a lot tonight, aren't I? But I just want to let you know that I used to be radical like that. That's the same kind of spirit that we need to get back into when we're uh, chasing these people down for God. Amen? See, but for us to be able to be kept, there has to be a connection. Give me just a second here, a little time check. There has to be a connection. Now, if you desire to be kept by God continually, there must be a connection. Now, here's an illustration, and it was a little weird to me at first, but I, I went ahead, and I'm going to go ahead and use it. So listen to this illustration. There is a water hydrant that sits at the street level. Has everybody seen a water hydrant? Yeah. And so when you turn on, water comes gushing out of it, right? Now, we all know that that hydrant doesn't have water in it, right? I mean, it, it's, a, it's a funnel for water. But that hydrant ain't holding all that water that's coming out. Can I get an amen? See, there's a pipe connection beneath the surface that we cannot see. Right? But it's there for sure. Because there's no way you're going to see the fire department open that fire hydrant up and that water's coming out of this little stump. No, there's a connection. And we just assume it. Or maybe we don't even think about it. See, the only way for the water to come from the hydrant that we see on the surface is to have a connection beneath the surface. So just to put this in terms, we're the fire hydrant, right? And God wants to open up that screw, right, and allow his water, his life, to come through us through that hydrant. See, for us to stay in the keeping power of the Almighty, we have to stay connected to him. See, when we lose our connection with God, we lose our power. But he'll, he'll keep us, but we're not operating with effect. You ever seen somebody operate with effect? Anybody here ever watch Pastor Dan walk in a room and, and the whole atmosphere changed? And, 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 and not, I'm talking in the spirit, right? That's because that water's coming out of him. Everything he does, God moves before him because he is connected to God at a very deep level. Amen. And it doesn't mean that we don't have that same capability. But the more that we choose to connect to God, the more power that God is going to fill us up with. Right? Every area that we yield inside of us, God steps in there and fills it with his purpose, right? His power. So you've got to understand something about God. And I say this in my prayers a lot, that wherever he is, there's fullness, wholeness, entirety. Nothing's missing, nothing's lacking, nothing's broken. Many of us have those things in, in our spirit, in our lives. And God wants to come and replace those things, right, with his power, with his fullness, right? He wants to restore, reconcile us so that we can be the people that he called us to be. I'll be coming in for a landing here soon. Now, Matthew chapter 6, 5 and 6 says this. And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and the street corners that they may be seen by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret, right? And your father who sees in secret 
will reward you. Right? See, that's how we pierce the surface as we pray to God. When we pray, it's great when we come up here in corporate prayer and we come in one mind and one accord and we're unified, right? Because we see throughout the entire Bible that every time there was a a congregation of people that were giving um, God praise, that miracles happen, right? The day of Pentecost, right? The wall of Jericho coming down, right? Whenever people come together in unity, things happen because they are connected to God's power. We have to understand that we need an intimate relationship with the Father in order for His keeping power to gush out of us. Right? Keeping power. See, Christians need other Christians. And, and I can go ahead and have the worship team come up. I want you to really listen to this. Christians should not operate alone. Sometimes we think, and maybe we've been offended, whatever reason it may be, maybe we were made uncomfortable. Maybe something happened to us that we didn't understand and made us feel some kind of way. The plan of the enemy is to divide you from the body of Christ. I'm going to say that again. The plan of the enemy is to put space between you and God. And any way that he can do this through your family, right, through your pride, through um, character flaws, the enemy is going to try to use that to separate you from God because he knows that if he can get you separated from God, you cannot access that power. But God's still going to keep you. Amen? Because that's the type of God that we have. See, we can't operate alone. We can't think that we can stay at home and watch Joyce Meyer, which I like Joyce Meyer, by the way. But we can't sit there and watch all these different preachers, right, and tie the three different churches um, and then not get connected, not have spiritual authority in our lives. I'll tell you what, if I didn't have somebody that I was accountable to, I'd be cutting up even as a Christian. Amen. You know, God, God put somebody in my life called my wife, right, that doesn't let me stray too far before the hammer comes down. And if I really cut up, there's somebody else that's got a bigger hammer for me. Right? That's pastor. <laughs> and I willingly surrender and submit myself to that spiritual authority because that's where God brought me. Watch this. God brought all you in here so he could grow you, right? So that he could develop you, that you could go out, right, and begin to make an impact in this city. Because the folks in this city are, are dying. They're hurting. They're lost. We're blessed. We, we're seeing it, and we may have been living it, but there's still other people that are living that way that we used to, and they need our help. Watch this. James 5 and 16 says this. Confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. And what's he saying here? He's saying, look, man, if you become prideful and you offend somebody or somebody offends you and and, and you're withholding forgiveness, you know what's happening? You have offense in your heart. And if you have offense in your heart, you have turned that tap off. God's power is no longer operating through you. And let me tell you why. The Word of God says this, and, 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 and there's only one way to take this, that if we can't forgive others, how can He forgive us? No, no matter how bad that thing was that they did to us, think about what Christ did for us. We could never measure an experience that we have on this earth with what He did. But our pride will convince us that we do. And the enemy's really good at that because he'll use someone close to you, someone in your family. You'll be like, you know what? I'll, f- I'll forget a brother in the church, but I ain't forgetting my brother. He know better. He knows about to do that. That's it. That's the last time I'm cutting him off. That's the enemy working in your life so that you can get some bitter fruit and some unforgiveness welled up in you and you ain't going to be able to touch and, and, and use the power that God has in your life until you let that thing get up off you. See, Ephesians 2 and 19 to 21 says this. It says, so then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. We are members of the household of God. That's something amazing, right? And we are built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being what? The cornerstone. In whom the whole structure being joined together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. 
I just, I just have to say this. The one thing that's going to stop us from operating and accessing that keeping power is going to be sin. It's going to be unforgiveness, right? It's going to be uh, pride. It's going to be operating in a way uh, that is contrary to God's word. Those things are sins, right? The word says this, and this is about as intense as I'm going to get with you. It's going to be counted against you if you know what you're supposed to do and you don't do it. Now, when we was out there messing up, doing drugs, right, in the club, we were in ignorance. We didn't know any better, right? But when we come into the acknowledgement of the truth and we understand what the cost was for our, our renewal and our revival, and we continue to do those same things, that grace no longer hangs over our, our life. We're going to begin to experience, right, the repercussions of our actions. But God will still keep you. If God will keep you in that situation. We just have to know that tonight is a good night, and you guys can go ahead and rise. Tonight's a good night to come up to this altar. Give your heart to God. If there's any unforgiveness within you, if there's anything that, that you've been neglecting to give over to God, if you have a situation that has stopped you in your tracks, this is the time to come up, right? We're going to pray a little bit tonight. And, and I expect everybody just to grab a hold of God. If this doesn't apply to you, and I don't see how this can't apply to everybody, because it applies to me too, just remember and go back to that day when God first touched your life. Can you sing, take me back? Take me back? Take me back. Amen. And as we go into prayer, let's remember, God keeps us, right? We heard a word tonight that God wants to let us know that he's kept us even when we didn't know him and he's loving on us now that we do know him, right? And we have to understand that many things that should have happened to us didn't. And we, we're not even aware of it. But tonight, I hope that you think back. I hope that you remember those times that, that God had your back when nobody else did. Remember those times when you did something wrong and you was waiting to get caught or waiting to get told on and it never happened, right? Because God didn't want to reveal it at that time. He's, he's still working in you in that area, right? So tonight, I just ask that you go before God. You ask him to look in your heart. You ask him to help you to forgive those that have done damage to you. You begin to ask him to remove these things that's stopping that, that uh, water of life from gushing out of you. Because I'm here to tell you, the water of life is in all of us. Every one of us that believes we are a container for the Holy Spirit, right? Amen. Let's raise our hands. So we say, take me back. Take me back, dear Lord, to the place where I first received you. Take me back. Take me back, dear Lord, where I first believed. Everybody say, take me back. Take me back. Take me back. Take me back, dear Lord. Lord, we just praise you, God. Father, we remember, God. We remember, God, when... When those things that didn't happen to us that should have, God, we remember those times now, God. Lord, open our minds and our hearts up to what you've done, God. Oh, Lord, that we could understand and realize the depth of your love for us, God. Lord, I'm praying, God, tonight, Lord, that you begin to remove the stronghold of offense. That whoever here at this altar has offense in their heart, God, that it would be lifted, God. Lord, it's by your mighty hand and your grace, God, that these things are lifted, God. I pray, Lord, for that those that have an unforgiving spirit, God, that the conviction of the Holy Spirit would move, God, and remove, God, that unforgiveness, God. Oh, Lord, show us, God, the area in which we are failing, God, that, Lord, we can hand it over to you, God. Lord, we're asking, God. Right now, Lord, that you give us that same fire as when we first received you, God. Oh, Lord, that, that excitement, God, when we learned the truth, God. Oh, Lord, we pray for revival to be poured out upon this altar, God, right now. Oh, Lord, move, God. 
move, God, right now in the hardened heart, God. Lord, begin, Father, that process, God, of breaking up that fallow ground, God, of piercing those walls, God. Oh, Lord, that your love may enter in, God. Father, we just love you tonight, God. We're asking for forgiveness, God, for anything that we've done or said, even those things that we don't understand, God. And we know, Lord, that we are covered by the blood, Lord. We thank you, God, for the blood, God. We thank you, Lord, God, for renewal, that we are fresh, God. We thank you, Lord, right now, God, that you're moving in such a way that we're not going to be the same after we leave tonight, God. But, Lord, you've opened up our mind and our heart, God. You've opened up hearts, God, in this congregation, Lord. Lord, I pray that you begin to impart vision, God. Oh, Lord, there's some people here, God, that, that aren't sure what their calling is, God. I pray, Lord, that you reveal it to them tonight, God. Oh, Lord, we know that your calling is not a hard thing, God. It's simple, God. Oh, Lord, we pray that you keep it simple with us, God, so that we can understand, Lord. Lord, just move tonight, God. Oh, Lord, let a brokenness come across these people, God. Oh, Lord, that we could be renewed, God. Washed, God. Washed by your Spirit, God. I thank you, God, for the young men and young women, God. Oh, Lord, you're bringing a freshness into the ministry, God. Oh, Lord, let that fire be contagious, God. Let that fire spread, God. Oh, Lord, we're thankful for what you're doing in this movement, God. Father, hear our prayers. Hear our prayers, God. Incline your ear and hear our prayers, God. Father, we want change, God. We want to do more, God. We want to do better, God. Help us, Lord. Help us, God. I know that it's hard sometimes when God comes down our lane and sometimes it's hard for us to let go of that thing that he doesn't want us to have but this is the time and the place church if there's something here that you haven't let go of this is the time to lay it down we're, we're in a, a congregation right now right we're in unity and God is here and he wants to move he wants to do what he has planned to do in your life today this is a divine appointment not because I'm up here preaching, because this is what God has ordained, this word. Amen? So I, I pray that maybe we could just give them a few more minutes. And if there's something in your heart that, that you're having difficulty with, just raise your hand, right? If there's something that you want prayer for, raise your hand, and we'll have a minister come pray. Amen? I see you. Amen? I see you. Amen? Hallelujah. Let's just go ahead and let's, let's start praying, God. Let's pray. We're praying for healing. We're praying for healing, God. We're praying for that renewal, God. We're praying for that refreshment, God. Lord, we know that you're going to do it, God. Oh, Lord, they've heard the message, God. Oh, Lord, let that be that message, God, hit them, God, in their heart, God. Oh, Lord, we pray, God, for a renewed spirit, God. Oh, Lord, Father, I pray you fill them with the power of the Holy Spirit, God. We thank you, Lord, that you show us the right way, God. Oh, Lord, I pray that you would be a lamp unto their feet, God. Lord, that as they walk away from this, this uh, service tonight, that you would shine your light before them, God. Oh, Lord, that you would be that candle, Father, that, Lord, you would uh, show them every pitfall that the enemy has for them, God. I thank you, Lord, right now, God, for deliverance in their lives. I thank you for deliverance, God, from offense, God. I thank you, God, that you, you hear us, God. You hear us, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Take me back. Lord, take me back, dear Lord, to the place where I first received you. Lord, take me back. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Why don't you just come to a neighbor next to you, give him a hug. 
Um, or you can get one of them Holy Ghost elbows, right, if you don't want to get too close and you got the wrong neighbor. Amen. Come on now. I believe that God's word was delivered. Amen. You guys feel good? All right. All right. So what are we going to do when we leave here? We're going to keep on believing, right? We're going to keep going, and we're going to keep growing. Amen? All right. Y'all may be uh, dismissed. Brother Larry, is there anything that needs to be announced? Okay. All right. Yep. Let's make sure that we're here. Sunday morning, uh, prayer starts at 1030. Serve, or pardon me, 10 o'clock, and uh, service starts at 11. There will be no service over in Kansas, but we will be here. Prayer at 10, service at 11. We'll see you then.